do you think that like the lifetime movies or the hallmark movies where like you see people like meet up after not seeing each other for years and they find themselves in love and they have happy endings you think that's a romance novel would that be considered the same thing you mean like the movies yeah no okay no because there's no smut involved or no because technically what those are romances And we are back. We're back. Ruminations, Revelations, episode 13, I think. I don't keep track anymore. I, I, I mean, I'm not really either. It's just, you know, the number thing makes it easy for people who are listening on a podcast streaming service. For everybody else, they don't care. Yeah. They're just glad to get a new episode. Hell yeah. So today has been a day. Has been a day. It really has been. What you doing? Praying your iPad's got power? I know it doesn't. I'm just <laughs> testing it. <laughs> Does it not actually have power? And the off chance that I turned it off. And it does not have power. All right. All right. So now that you have a charging iPad, mm. we started moving stuff into the studio. We did. That's exciting. Mike is going to get the painting done this weekend or this coming weekend. And our home accents are going to start building our walls. Mm hmm. And we should be up and running in that space by October 1st. That's insane to think about. Yep. Today is, uh, is August 26th. I would like to believe that we will be completely up and running in there by September 26th. So the goal is to, to be there by September 26th. We've already got people ready to be interviewed in October, scheduled mm -hmm. to be in studio. Uh, we still need to adjust some things in here. Like I want to get these chairs out of this room and those screen dividers need to go. Maybe we can do that today if it if it's not super, super hot. Take these chairs and stuff out of here. And then um, things just doing a thing. I was really hoping we'd hear back about my car so that I could go get my car and we could go get you some dresses for Vegas. But Yeah, that would be actually pretty dope to do today. Could do it tomorrow. Yeah. Can't get it done today. Just have to be later in the afternoon tomorrow. Okay. Which would be fine because I know the dealership closes I think at four today. So mm -hmm. if they can't get my car back today, we'll go ahead and do these chairs and get all that shit done tonight so we don't have to worry about it. All right. So as much as I would love to rant and banter and, and do the playfulness, let's go ahead and get into this. And then if we have time afterwards, we can be playful and banter. Okay. I would also like to probably try to record an episode today. Okay. I shouldn't have taken that nap. Jeff was right when he said I'm like a cat because now I just want some food and relax. <laughs> Maybe stretch out in front of the sun. That'd be nice. Go live your lizard dreams. No, I think cat's more accurate. Yeah? Yeah. If I could curl up underneath a car in the shade but feel the heat, I would enjoy that. Hmm. Sleep for six hours. That'd be nice. Yeah? Yeah. So we had an email. Actually, fuck it. Just read the email and then we'll okay. get into it because it's not what we're going to read is an email that was sent in to us that provoked a conversation with us that is not at all what the emailer is asking for. Yes, we are going to provide no help to this emailer. None. None. <laughs> um, so sorry. I know that you reached in in the hopes of guidance, maybe. Um, I got nothing on this, yeah. but we have a really good conversation to have. <laughs> So, the email is titled, What Would You Want to See in a Romance Novel? Nothing, because I don't read them. I don't think I've ever read a romance novel. I'm more into, like, the mystery, spooky, ghost stories, Hunger Games. Divergent was a really good series. I'm more into, like, sci-fi fantasy shit. Yeah, same. Um, I can't remember the last book that I read that was not... Well, actually, I can. It was Ready Player Two when it came out. But everything else that I've read has been business, entrepreneur, like self improvement, self improvement. Because I, I would rather read that yeah. things on leadership. I want if I'm going to read and I'm going to spend that time dedicating to something. I want something that's going to benefit my life, not just kill time. Right. So when do you relax? When I go to bed at night. Okay. During playtime. The random Need for Speed Heat games that I've been playing. 
Not gonna lie, it's pretty fun playing video games. Those are pretty fun to watch. I enjoy watching you. I ended up taking a nap while you were playing. Yeah. I'm not a big video game person. I normally don't enjoy them, but because this is solo play, I'm not playing online. I'm just playing the campaign. Mm -hmm. I can jump in and play for 15, 20 minutes and then jump out and it's not a big deal. Yeah. So like when, when like if you were outside smoking or taking some self care time where I would normally be on the computer editing or, or researching something, I've just been getting a little bit of game time in. We also are so far ahead. Well, not so far ahead. We are far ahead, but we're so far like, I don't have anything to do right now. Oh, you have nothing to edit. Nothing. So like I, I oh been, you're losing your mind. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty bad. That's why I've been playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's okay though. I thought you were just taking like some self care time. No, no, I'm. I, have I nothing didn't realize. To do. <laughs> Work's done. This is work now, and then I'll edit this one and be done with it too. Yeah, I, I have nothing. Jeff and Angie's done. Thirty eight's done. So you're just a mouse fucking getting it on that wheel right now. Yes. Trying to burn some energy. Yep. That's why I've been running around doing all the shit that I've been doing. Trying to get the truck wrap, trying to get the table wrap, trying to help Jordan do the console thing. Like, da, 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 how much da, da. is the table wrap? I didn't ask. I don't care. It's gonna look dope. Hmm. Gonna have that table set up in that that main room with with microphones set up on it. Was that instead of my camera. car? No, okay. no, it's in lieu of. In lieu of. Yes. What does that mean in lieu also, of? Also, do you want an actual definition? Yes, I would appreciate that. Instead, so no, I guess it's not the right word. I am at the mercy of their art department for your truck because I've given them what you want on it. Mm -hmm. And when I get a proof back, I'll get a proof back. But I told them what I wanted done to the truck like three weeks ago mm -hmm. and they just sent me the proof yesterday. Yeah. So hopefully they can get my truck done while we're in Vegas. That'd be dope. Yeah. But how long does it usually take to do wraps like that? Two to three days. Oh, well, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. I was imagining like a two week process. No. I don't know how that shit happens. Mm -hmm. Is that when they take the heat gun? To it and they have to like smooth it out really good. Okay, no, I watched those on TikTok. Yep. When I want mindless things to look at, I watch videos like that where I learn something. I like epoxy videos too. Yeah, I know I you do. Watch. I know you do. You just want to get back into the email? Yes. It says, hi guys, I'm a 22 year old grad student at Truman State University in MO. Missouri. I said Montana in the car. MT. Hmm. I live with my boyfriend of three years and he was raised in a household where his parents held more traditional roles and I myself have grown to love being the woman of the house and taking on that role in our relationship. I follow you both on TikTok and just started listening to your podcast, so I thought who better to try to talk to than you. I'm currently taking a writing YA novel course for fun, but I want to take it seriously, so I need your help. Today was our first meeting of class on Zoom and we talked about what our goals were for the semester. I was hoping on I was hoping to work on writing romance content for this class. However, typical romances that I've read have high school drama bullshit and breakdowns in communication, as well as overall toxicity regarding lust over love. Thus, my goal is to write something that holds more traditional values, such as a sweet romance with a demonstration of good communication and a partnership in a home, etc. So my question is, if you were reading such a book, what would you want to see and why? Uh, well, one, first and foremost, the drama, high school drama, the lust over love and the communication issues in those books are because people read romance novels because it's smut. Mm, it's escapism. It, it's They're not doing it because they want a good storyline. They want the juicy parts. <gasps> oh, my God. I can't believe he said. Oh, my God. They're fucking like. Yeah. People don't give a shit about those storylines. They might like if they're invested in a series, mm -hmm. but they're really waiting for those sex scenes. Like that's just it's it's a just a variant of of porn to me yeah i like i've said i've never read a romance novel so before sitting down and recording this i was like i don't want to but i have to so i just googled excerpts from romance novels and the very first paragraph i was immediately uncomfortable it's corn mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make you more elegant because you're reading it All right it doesn't make you a higher class over a male watching corn it's the same thing it is the other thing that i was going to say is if you want to write a novel that has a love story in it that is not smutty wasn't gone with the wind a love story oh i have no idea i have to look that up now i never read gone with the wind i'm not interested in romance novels okay despite the pro uh the pronounced lack of happily ever after mm. gone with the wind is on a lot of people's list as a romance novel so there you go. 
Might have taken a screenshot of it. That was I was reading an article where they talk about romance novels and the way they can alter the brain and whatnot. Okay. And that ending, the happy ending that could negate the romance aspect of things was part of that article. Really? Yeah. Well, there's definitely happy endings involved in those books because people use them the way the same men the way the, the same way that men use websites. Right. And part of the psychology behind that is um from my understanding men biologically like when you put it down to that primal shit are meant to reproduce right there's no emotional attachment there's no feelings involved it's get it over with and keep doing shit to survive yep women biologically have more emotional attachment to things so when it comes to romance novels women get involved in that emotional plot line you could borderline say it's emotional cheating with yep. the way they get tied into characters and shit and compare their husbands to it and whatnot. Yeah, I would agree with that. The way, same way that men get so involved in corn that they start generalizing, might not be the right word, but generalizing women into, oh, well, if I'm watching it repeatedly on a website, all women must enjoy that. Right. You know? It's the same kind of detriment to the mental health. You got to find that next thing. Mm. Next dopamine response. You are really tired, huh? I'm exhausted and I'm still a little bit stoned. I did not expect to be recording today. We tried to do this earlier, but they're replacing the gutters now that the roof is done. And you're so. like, well, day off. And I was like, day off. Okay. Had almost a week. What do you mean had almost the week? So much shit happened. I was doing school stuff yesterday. Right. But I meant like from work. I was doing life shit. <laughs> I didn't say that we weren't busy. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying we have not recorded. I was thinking we have today was going to be like a legit day. We have not done record stuff for To Be Better. We've yeah. done all kinds of other shit for To Be Better. Mm. Who's that? I Twitch. Don't acknowledge it. <laughs> Don't acknowledge it. <laughs> we kicked ass at poker last night, guys. Just so you know. We did. First and second place. Um, I'm starting to get uncomfortable with poker. I am. I'm good. And now it's becoming conversation piece. That's good though. That so you should play that to your advantage. I don't like people being disgruntled with me. Yeah, well, it's a game. They're always yeah. going to be disgruntled. Doesn't matter how that plays out. Especially when they go out on the bubble. They don't make the money, they get super butt hurt. I have ninety one points. Yeah. Yeah, you've got me by uh almost twenty points. I'm at seventy three. And you're in second and place. I'm in second place, yep. Yeah. It's wild. You called me Rain Woman last night and yeah. like I was I I was uncontrollably laughing because I was so uncomfortable because it was just win after win and like I won something I probably shouldn't have won. A couple times. And like I looked up at the table and I saw Sean just going like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot. I don't know what to do with this information at this point. I'm past the point of being excited and now I'm kind of like this is okay. We'll keep that excitement going until we get back from Vegas because when we sit down in a casino, it may not play out like that. You, you may be like the best person in, in our area playing poker or like in our friend group, maybe a giant. And then when you start getting an ego, we'll just go to the casino and, and then we'll see how you play. And then if you are not good at the casino, but you're really good here, anytime you need like a uh, to be kicked off the pedestal, yeah. we'll just hit the casino. I, I fully expect to lose every time I go to the casino. When I win, I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, I do win. I, I actually, when we do cash games in Vegas, I normally walk away up, mm -hmm. but I don't expect to. I'm going there to have fun and to experience it. So like the other night when we went to our friends and played at their house and I bought in and bought in and bought in, I didn't give a shit. I was there to have fun. Yeah, it was for the fun of it. It was, and it was fun. And you won. I did. <laughs> yeah, we walked away in a positive. <laughs> I really fully believed we were going to walk away in a deficit that night. So did I. So did I. Yeah. Oh, wow. The tides have tabled. <laughs> the what? It's a joke because I'm so overwhelmed. The tides have tabled? Yeah. <laughs> how the tables have turned, how the tides have swayed, Yeah. whatever. <laughs> how the tides have tabled. <laughs> don't acknowledge it. My Twitch, don't acknowledge it. Yep. Journals came in. The journals did come in. Yeah. We sold, I think, 10 of them already. Are we side railing or did we finish our conversation? No, uh, we are way side railing. We are way side railing. <laughs> I hit you with your tired and we just went with it. <laughs> yeah. 
the, are we going to keep going? It's the wanna... comedic relief in between the serious conversations that make our our content palatable for people. Oh, I was going to okay. Because we can have a really serious moment and then there's laughter and playfulness and then a really serious moment and then laughter and playfulness. Yeah. It's like the video of the baby who's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I love it when babies don't have eyebrows, yeah. but you can see their eyebrow muscle moving. That's the funniest shit to me when they make super serious faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looks like it's just like, a, I'm not going to say an alien because... Could aliens have eyebrows? Do you think know. aliens could have airs? I mean, we have hair and we're aliens. Oh, my God. They could. That would never be an accurate description ever. No. Who am I to say that? A baby with no eyebrows could look like an alien when we, in fact, are aliens ourselves floating through space and we have hair. Inaccurate comparison. <laughs> Just going to let you run with it. I don't know why you would. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the email. That's let's it. Get back to the <laughs> Sorry, let's get back to the conversation of the smut thing. You want, Do you want to read your screenshot? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I did that. You did. So I want to answer that question. Um, if you were reading such a book, what would you want to see and why? I would never read such a book. I wouldn't. I have other things to occupy my attention. I have other interests. I have other things that I use as escapism. Um, reading... Like I said, I Googled excerpts, 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 specifically from romance novels. I didn't write smut books or anything, just romance novels. And reading a sex scene between two fictional characters makes me almost as comfortable as watching a sex scene in like Yellowstone, for example. It's that same kind of like, why is this, this isn't part of the plot line. Why are we seeing this? I got nothing I for you. I think with romance novels, though, that is a big part of the plot line. I think that's the actual point of it. It's Sex the, is the plot line? I think it's a huge part of it, yeah, because the whole point of it is to have the characters fall in love and have that romantic or non-romantic, lustful scenario, and that's what women read those books for. Right. So I think in that scenario, it is a huge part of it. It's like, you know, when you watch a corn and the guy's like, I'm here about some clogged pipes <laughs> or uh, did somebody order a pizza that's obviously <laughs> oh my god it is the same thing when you think about it it is the same thing right one's just written by rookie bobby and the other's written by shakespeare <laughs> i wouldn't go that far on one of them, but... <laughs> okay so the things that i screenshotted <laughs> not shitting on people who do read romance novels it makes if it makes you happy dope I'm just uncomfortable reading that. I, I'm good. I'm fiddling with things because I don't know what to do with my hands because I'm uncomfortable. So I found an article from The New Yorker. And the person who wrote the article added this little insert into this. And I was like, I was blown away. I was like, damn, you're fucking right. It's brutal. But you're right. And she said, if you love to read, just choose a different type of book. There are many interesting choices that do not include arousing scenes. If you're not in a real relationship, you may want to focus on finding one. Are you spending time reading instead of getting out there, making new friends and meeting people? Damn. Get out your mama's basement and go meet people. <laughs> I was like, oh my. One of the first articles I open and that's it tells me everything I need to know about people who obsessively read romance novels. That gives me the same vibe as a man who goes to work. Goes home, super depressed, not in a relationship, and then watches corn to fall asleep. There are so many. There's definitely a third step to that. But yeah. <laughs> Why did my mind go, you're right, fourth step, they're milking the udder. <laughs> they're milking the bull. <laughs> Is that a thing? Do y'all really call it that? No. I know y'all call it a lizard. Oh my God. <laughs> Got it, huh? <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Damn. 
that oh my god needs to be clipped in a sound. <laughs> I'm crying. Holy shit. You mean cake batter. Baby batter? Mm, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah, that makes sense because they do do that. <laughs> to bulls. <laughs> I thought it was just a little cute name that you guys call your penises. <laughs> <laughs> that was all recorded. Yep, it was. We got another peach moment for you. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. So... In terms of, um, in terms of of what is going on with women who who read those books, do you really think that women start would start to become resentful towards men who they are married to or with because they are fantasizing about other like relationships in those books and starts to maybe shift their cognitive bias to their own relationship? Yes, because I, I know that we've had we've had discussions where there are men who will make that claim. I watch corn because mm-hmm. there's things that I'm into that she's not into or it's faster and easier. Or, I don't feel fulfilled when I do it with her. Right. So I wonder if that's the same case and that's why women read those smut novels. And I wonder what the answer is to that. I actually don't think I know anyone in real life who reads that shit. So I mean, I'm sure I do. Just don't know about it. Honestly, I think the answer to that is a lot of men need to be more emotionally invested in their wives. You know, for a lot of men, that's very hard, though. Because like you said earlier, men are not very emotional creatures. So there needs to be a common ground of understanding between men and women. In terms of what each other needs. Of what each other needs and the extent of the capacity of being able to provide it. Okay, elaborate on that. I'm going to use us as an example. We both have BPD. And we both feel things to an extreme. I'm a woman. So I think with my BPD added on top of my emotions, my extremes can go emotionally a hundred times more than yours. And my hormones aren't right. Yeah. So let's add another sprinkle of fucking chaos. I can get to emotional level that I thoroughly believe that you are incapable of understanding because your brain cannot get to that level of emotion. Right. Well, I agree with that. I think that that's the case for all men and women though, because we are a lot logical problem solvers and you're not right. So there have been a few moments where you have done everything you can do physically for me. Like you've held me, you've brushed my hair and whatnot and you've done the things to comfort me and it's helped but there have been a few moments where I was like, why am I still so upset and frustrated? And it, it, it dawned on me. It's because you literally cannot comprehend the level of emotion I'm going through. Like I'm fucking turmoil mess. My world's falling apart inside of me emotion wise. And because you've never experienced that extent of emotional turmoil, you just don't understand what I'm going through. And I, I can understand after 30 minutes of me sobbing, you're just like, okay, I don't fucking get it. Like, what is the problem? What can I do? And I'm like, I'm telling you what the problem is. That's where that, have you seen that bridge where it's like two tiered and there's like a pathway on top and a pathway on the bottom? You're on the bottom pathway and I'm on the top pathway and there's no way for you to get up to the top pathway. And that's just one of those things where I have to understand you really are doing your best and you're putting yourself in uncomfortable positions to comfort me. And that's one of those things where I have to tell myself, okay, like this is one of those moments where I really only have my fucking self to say, okay, you're okay. You've got this. The world's not fucking falling apart. You got to relax a little bit. Like nobody is going to comfort you more than you can comfort yourself right now. And I think that that common ground of men need to step a little bit, step up a little bit more emotionally and be more willing to understand instead of get frustrated. And women need to understand that men can only understand so much. So you can't be so harsh on men after an hour of you crying Going, I, I don't know what else to do. Well, I've been telling you what's the matter. He fucking can't understand. I don't know how else to say it. Well, it's also not a matter of what else can I do. He can't understand it. It's that there's literally nothing we can do. Literally nothing, yeah. But if, if you were with another woman and you were overly emotional and she was not, 
I mean, you can't expect other people to jump on your emotional roller coaster with you. Right. So even if you were going through it and I could get on that level with you, why? Mm -hmm. Why would I want to get on that level with you? You know what I mean? Like that's right. your 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 emotional shit that mm -hmm. you need to figure out. And I can be there for you and hold you and talk to you about it, but like me getting emotional is not going to help anything. Right. So that all that now that all that's been said, do you think that that women who write in and that say I wish my man was more emotionally vulnerable with me is because they want their man to be able to be as emotional in the moment as they are, because that doesn't, that's not going to solve anything. I would say less emotional in the moment as they are. They just want to see more emotion in general. So say something happens in the man's <clears throat> life and he just shrugs it off like men do fucking is what it is. Maybe dad says some offhand shit to the man and wife's tired of the man's dad being disrespectful to him. Like you're a grown adult. Why is your dad speaking to you this way? And she might, we had an email about this where a woman was just so fed up with her husband's father and it was causing arguments in their relationship right? because she was overly emotional about the situation. He was just, it is what it is. That's my fucking dad. I'm not willing to pick these fights. I just want a relationship with him. So I think in those moments, that, that's where they're seeking that. Why don't you tell me what's going on? He, like, he's not hiding the feelings from you. There's really nothing going on. He's not as emotionally invested as you are. Well, but again, like you said earlier, we're not as emotional as women are, period. Like We're right. not emotional creatures, and we are problem solvers. Yeah. And this also comes down to picking your battles. There are people that I love that can talk to me differently than people that I don't. Mm -hmm. Sean, for instance, could say anything he wants to me. And it might hurt my feelings, but I'm not going to not love him anymore because of it. You right. know what I mean? He, he's like my brother. So in, in that scenario, I don't, he's going to say some harsh shit from time to time. And it's things that I need to hear, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to come in and like cry and scream and break things and be fucking an emotional mess over it. I'm going to process it and move fuck on with my life. It's not worth me getting upset over. I think that that's where the differences in our genetic makeup are. Mm-hmm. That empathy and that emotional connection that women have make you makes you better mothers, right? It, or a better parent it makes you a better parent, obviously, because not a mother, but mm -hmm. it, it and that's why men parent differently than children uh, than than mothers, mothers do. do. So I, I don't know. I I think that I I think that that's really something that people need to think about a little bit more because when you really think about all of the emails that we get where these conversations have been had mm -hmm. and the woman is being overly emotional and she's like, I just wish she would blah, blah, blah. You can't make somebody else get on that roller coaster. And like you look at like the, the laundry basket and the laundry thing. You're like, I, I have no problem picking my man's underwear up off the floor. If it's three inches from the laundry basket, I, it's an honor to me to do that. And other women are like, it's three fucking inches away. Why couldn't you just make it in the basket? And like they make an ordeal out of it. Mm -hmm. If you jumped on that bandwagon and made an ordeal out of it because you read on the internet that you were supposed to. And I'm like, it's not that big of a fucking deal. It takes two seconds to put everything in the basket. I do it all the time. Like right. me jumping on that roller coaster with you now gives me ammo the next time you do something. And, you know, why didn't you put the fucking toilet seat down mm -hmm. or up or whatever? You know, yeah. How dare you leave your cup on the fucking whatever overnight? Like it, it you're creating a, a um a reason to argue with your person that doesn't really exist. I agree with that. I was thinking about that romance novel thing again. She was saying that she doesn't want to do like the petty high school bullshit drama, whatever. Right. Like you said, it's because women. I mean, majority of women. I know there are men who read romance novels and whatnot, but this is. A woman emailed in, so we're going to focus on the woman aspect of shit. Women who read those novels are searching for something, who are fantasizing or comparing whatever's going on. Do you think that a romance novel that is based in communication, maybe beginning of the book, the wife finds out the husband's cheating on her. And instead of leaving him and saying, fuck you, I can't believe it, you've done this to me. They sit down and figure out their shit. And this novel is like across three years of them working through whatever they need to work through. And it shows like the messy fallouts and whatnot. But then like at the end, they come together stronger because of it. Like, do you think a novel like that would actually be productive? It wouldn't be a romance novel. Why would it not classify as a romance novel? Um, 
I because I don't so and I could be wrong because I don't read books like this, but I, when I hear romance novel, I think of a love story with a lot of like sex scenes in it. Okay. I don't think of like a love story because you think when like I, Fabio shit. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I know that he's a model. That's the extent that I know of that. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I, I understand that Gone with the Wind is on people's romance novels list because I, I just saw that on Google. But the idea of a love story with no sex scenes in it, I don't think would. I think it would cater to a different group of people. I guess it's really what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, or even if they were very nondescript and, and like... They turn off the lights and then that's the end of the chapter because mm-hmm. you get the idea that they're fixing to do the deed. Like, yeah, there's no detail at that point. You're moving on because the sex is something that happens between the characters, but it is not pertinent to the story. Right. If you have four fucking pages of super in-depth of what's happening, somebody just wants to write a raunchy sex scene, write short stories and put it on the Internet or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not it's not the same thing to me. I think that a story needs to have sustenance. Um there is an author named Terry Goodkind who wrote the sort of true series. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a TV show called legend of the seeker that they made off of like the first book. There's like 19 books or 20 books or something like this in the series now. And Richard and Kalen, who are the, the main characters of the books have a love story that goes on. And like even their love story at times becomes too much for me to read because it's, it's, he's so descriptive with life. And like recounting past books that like I would find myself skipping pages because it's not pertinent to the story. If you've read the books and you're into the the storyline, having, you know, four pages of backstory of things that's just happened is bullshit. Mm -hmm. And for people who want to read the actual story, having four or five pages of a sex scene, most people that like are in it for the actual storyline, they don't give a shit about that. So like, why do you need to have that kind of thing? Like if there was a blooper you know, or something funny. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I just, I don't, that's just me though. I don't think that I need that. I want the story. Right. Like even Game of Thrones. We know that Jamie and Cersei were doing the deed in the first book. Mm -hmm. We knew that they were incestual. Yeah. If Martin got super into detail about the way that Jamie and Cersei were banging. Yeah, I'm good. I wouldn't be comfortable reading that. Like, especially Mm -hmm. because it's incestual. Right. But we don't need those kind of details to understand that this is happening. You can make a lot of sub- suggestive scenes in movies, books, and music, and people are like, oh, I get it. So once you get past making a suggestion that it's happening and getting into the details, that's in my head mm-hmm. where those novels change from a storyline to smut, a romance. Okay. So romance novel in my brain equals smut. Okay. I have something else to read. And I do look at that as corn. I agree, yeah. I absolutely do look at that as corn. Yeah, um, it is literally just a transcript of corn. Right, something that they can replay later in the moment when they need to. I came across Quora. It's a website where people can pose questions and random people can answer. And I came across a couple of answers that I thought were interesting. Okay. So the question was, what are the side effects of reading romantic novels? And somebody answered and said, I am 26 years old and the only relationships I have had are online and long distance. I'm gonna pause there. That's a lo- that just sounds horrible. It sounds very lonely. Yeah. I've done the long distance. I've dated a dude in Italy. Like the emotional turmoil it it turned inside of me because not only was it long distance, there was like a seven hour time difference. So trying to get schedules timed up and shit was near impossible. So there was always that constant. Like I knew he was in college, and he was constantly talking about this one chick, and I'm like. Okay, I mean, we talk maybe 30 minutes a day and whatever. It, it's fucking, I don't believe in long distance relationships. L- looking back on that. Yeah. Because you've said this a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Looking back on that, do you view that as an actual relationship? No. I have no idea who the hell that person was. I knew the superficial shit. Right. Favorite color, what kind of video games he liked. Yeah. I couldn't tell you his parents' names. It's not a relationship. Nope. Couldn't tell you what his bedroom looked like. Yeah. This, um, you know, it, early 1900s, 1800s, 1700s, people had pen pals. Yeah. They would write letters to and they would get excited when a letter came. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they were they were keeping correspondence with strangers. Yeah. But I don't, I, I can't imagine that people would call that a relationship. Like 
I, you know, I, I could understand too, if they knew each other in real life and then one went off to, to, to do like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I was going to say frontiersmen, but I'm looking for the word that became a pirate. There's a term for that. But people that, that were on ships that were went overseas to, to fight or whatever, there was there was penmanship that happened there. So, like, if you had the relationship beforehand, continuing that relationship and your only form of communication being letters, because that's what they had at the time, I can understand. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, all of the long distance, everything, I, I just don't, my brain doesn't comprehend that. I would want to meet somebody and really get to know them and believe they are who they are versus Mm -hmm. corresponding digitally. Yeah. I just don't think that that's, I mean, there are people that it works for. Uh, Yeah. Like they're completely introverted. Can't spend a lot of time with somebody. So that time apart is good for them. Yeah. Just as somebody who needs like quality time and physical touch and not for me, I'm willing to bet that more of those relationships end than then make it. I mean, obviously relationships end anyways, but in terms of like statistically, Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet a long distance relationship has a much higher failure rate than a normal relationship. Are you looking the stats? I am. So it depends on a factor of things. So depending on what you're looking at, if you group it all together, like people who are in a relationship and then someone is deployed, right? That kind of long distance or they met online, whatever. I see. But I don't see the first one of those as a see. That's not a long distance relationship to me. They established a relationship in person first. Right. Meeting online, somebody that lives in a different state and calling them your girlfriend or your boyfriend is foolish to me. Right. You don't know what they're doing in their day to day life. Mm -hmm. I just I don't know. So why not just call them friends or pen pals? Like, right. Okay. Romantic interest. That would work, too. Yeah. That's more reasonable than calling somebody that lives that far away your significant other. Yeah. So with all of them lumped in together, 40% of long distance relationships come to an end. Okay. But we don't That's we don't know how they're defining it though. Right. I'm willing to bet if you remove the people who knew each other before they started dating long distance, like in real life, that number would go um up. That the failure rate would go higher. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being cynical. I I, I don't yeah. know. It just seems like bullshit to me. So back into the answer that this person was giving. They said, the problem with reading romance novels at any age is that you develop ideas and aspirations that delve too far into fantasy and have little basis in reality. You fall in love with these characters that are not real and take them from ideologies on what you would like in a partner. Oh, and take from them ideologies on what you would like in a partner. Right. For me... I did no dating in high school and college because I was patiently waiting for the one with all of the qualities I decided I wanted in my partner. Men and women have passed me by because I was too blinded by my romantic notions of the perfect partner. I have put aside romance novels for some time now and I have since put such notions on the very back of my mind. I have actually started to look rather than wait. And I think from, from my understanding, romance novels, a lot of them are... It's a woman who is having a hard time in life and she's just completely swept off her feet by maybe a longtime friend or a stranger that just randomly popped into her life at a coffee shop. All of it includes that she wasn't looking. It just happened. Okay. I'm going to pause you just real quick. Okay. Do you think that like the Lifetime movies or the Hallmark movies where like you see people like meet up after not seeing each other for years and they find themselves in love and they have happy endings. Do you think that's a romance novel? Would that be considered the same thing? You mean like the movies? Yeah. No. Okay. Is, no, because there's no smut involved or no, because technically what that, those are romances, like a yeah. romance novel should fall into flick. that. Yeah. It should fall into that category. That sh- the notebook. P.S. I love you. Those should be romance novels. Were those heavily saturated with sex though? No. And that's my point. Yeah. I, so there is there is a difference in my opinion. I agree. And, and there might be a different label. I'm ignorant to that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But when I, 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 P.S. I love you makes me cry like a baby. Never seen it. Every time. Doesn't fucking matter. I will cry. Can't help it. What is it about? It's about a man who gets cancer and dies and has letters delivered through his wife's sister. Oh, fuck you. Stop. Yeah, it's Stop. bad. And he ends every one of them with P.S. I love you. Stop. Yep told you to stop (laughs) (laughs) 
It was the last sentence. I had it under control. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a fucker. <laughs> you asked. Oh. Are you saying are you saying that you wanted a date night tonight where we watch PS I love you? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> the thought of you leaving, I can't. It has nothing to do with our life, but I always put myself in situations. Yeah. Oh my god, I have my hanky. He ends up convincing her to start seeing someone else to move on. It's a really good movie. The he is voiced by Gerard Butler. So whenever she reads the letters, it's his voice. Oh, I can't. Emotionally, I fucking can't. I'm already sobbing. <laughs> it's so sweet and so thoughtful. And that's the kind of shit that women want in life. And I have it. Who sent you the the hankies? Do you remember? Was it Sabrina? I want to say it was Rissa. Rissa. I think it, I think was, it was Rissa. Rissa. Whoever sent those hankies. They clearly came into fucking use. They work really well. As she's well. got a whole stack of them over there now. I do. I plan on giving the kids one each in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're just snot carriers. <sighs> okay. So now that we've established that that is actually a romance and that could be a romance novel, there's obviously different le- le- levels of what a romance novel is. I still believe that most of the people that read those books do so for the thing that they are lacking in life. It's like emotional connection, right? It's like people who um, steal valor, right? That, that dress up to be military and try to pretend like they're military and and get caught for stolen valor. They do that shit because it's something that they, they wanted in life and they just couldn't have it or they couldn't hack it or whatever the case may be. You think it's a deep accomplishment that they want? It, It could be, it could be, it could be, it could be anything. There's something in there that calls to them that they just didn't do. Yeah. And like, for a romance novel, that's a it could be a compatibility thing. It could be not being willing willing to sacrifice enough of you to to get the things that those people want, because there is a sacrifice that comes into the relationships. Like long marriages are compromises. Yeah, it it's is a one long after series another, right? Of I love you more than this. I love you more than this. Right. That's it. And if you're not willing to make those compromises and you're not willing to sacrifice and do those things to be with that person, you will never have those PS I love you moments because you're not going to have somebody that's willing to dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to you because you've made them a problem the entire time or you've nagged and complained or they didn't want to come home. You know what I mean? Or or yeah. they were an alcoholic or whatever the reason was, like there was not enough sacrifice between the two of you to make that work. I really do view marriage as a sacrifice. It is a commitment. It is compromise and it is sacrifice. It, you know, if you want that, uh, that perfect love that you see in the movies and that you read in these books, you have to dedicate yourself to it. it right. I, I don't remember why I asked you about that. Cause you were talking about those type of movies. And I wanted to clarify that if that's considered a romance novel written like those movies are, I can understand how that's something that women would look for and want. Because there are a lot of people out there who watch John Wick that can't fucking fire a weapon because it's exciting and they put themselves in those those, those characters. Yeah. I have another thing to read. Okay. This is my last one. This one's kind of aggressive. This person said, answering the same question, I am going to catch a lot of flack for this, no doubt. But men like to look at sex and women like to think about it. Men like to imagine sex with lots of nameless women in all shapes, sizes, and nationalities. And women like to imagine being the obsessive focus of one incredible man. I mean, for the most part, I agree with that. I, I want to point out, she didn't say all men or all right. women. She just said men and women in their own respective ways. And I, uh, I agree with majority of that. Corn shows that. Women reading romance novels shows that. Men look at corn. Women read about sexy, swept off her feet relationships. Neither is real and both are an escape. I disagree with that, though. What is that? You disagree with what? That, that it's not real. I, in that scenario, it's obviously not real because corn is not real and neither are the romance novels. Right. But you mean like the emotions behind but what they want? having that is very much real. You mean the, the relationship and the romance? All of it. Okay. Okay. All yeah, all I need you to. Okay. You've said... And this is going to be vulgar. I apologize. This will be the only time I ever say this on the podcast. You say in front of people all the time that you are my personal porn porn star. Yeah. And you live that life. Mm. Like you say some fucking off the wall shit that will make 
it'll make a sailor blush. Like, <laughs> like you say some shit that g- woman, right? Yeah. And I, I am that romance obsessive over you. Yeah. Because you meet those needs in me without me ever having to think otherwise or like ask for it or anything. It's there. Mm-hmm. It's always there. I am always there for the obsessive, emotional, I love you, let's slow dance in the kitchen. Yeah. I'll open your fucking car door. You don't want to cook tonight, baby. You want DoorDash. Tell me what you want. What can I do to make you smile? Because that's the most beautiful thing in the world to me. Right? Like, we have that. So those things are fucking real. P.S. I love you. <laughs> it just stop. <laughs> <sighs> Haven't even seen the movie. I just knew that it would make you cry. <laughs> and you said it right after you said my smile's the most beautiful thing to you. You fucker. <laughs> You're so good at. <laughs> You're so good at loving me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and I say fucker with the utmost affection. I know you do. There's a video somewhere of us on the internet where you were like, you fucking dork. I love you. <laughs> do you remember that video? I do remember that, yeah. Yep. Uh, this shit was funny. The point of all of that, though, is that these things can exist. They can. But it's an ebb and flow. If you weren't all of those things that met all of those needs in my primal instinct of a man, I would not want to try to meet the emotional needs of you as a woman. Right. Because I do. It's not it's not effortless. Uh, ha- it takes a lot of effort for you. It, it does. And I bet it's very emotionally exhausting at times for it, you. It can be. But it also comes down to just trying to make mental notes of things in the moment. Like when you're like, oh, I really would like another box of chocolates. I'm like, okay, if I pick up my phone and order it right now, there's no surprise there. Right? But... At the same time, when I open my wallet to pull out a credit card to pay for the solar panels, and I'm like, I just cleaned my fucking wallet out three days ago. Why is there a piece of paper in here? And there's a I love you note from you tucked into my credit cards, knowing that I'm going to find this one day while I'm trying to open my wallet. Mm -hmm. That is an effort. That is something that you thought about doing in the moment that you knew what would make me smile. These things are our work. They are they are conscious efforts. Yeah. And with everything else that we have going on in our life and everything else that I have to focus on, it would be very easy for me to forget that you wanted that box of chocolates or that you need me to hold you when you cry or to wake up in the morning when I'm having a bad day and not kiss you good morning. Like it would be very easy to forget these things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes real shit, sometimes it happens. It doesn't happen often, but it does. And then you got to check that. And like those little gentle reminders, because you're never shitty about it, re-solidifies like, hey, this is not how I want to treat her. And, you know, because you take the extra effort to do things like that, in moments where you do something like offhand and not even trying to frustrate me or whatever, but you say something or do something that offhandedly frustrates me. In that moment, I make the conscious effort to love you even more because I know that I could be overreacting. Right. So instead of taking the path of, oh, you're going to do that, well, fuck you. It's a path of, it's noted. It can be a conversation later. I'm going to overlove him in this moment because I don't want to do anything to damage the relationship. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you think that those things solidify that romance novel want in life? Because if I say something backhanded or forget something or something comes out wrong, because I I am the fucking king of wrong tone, wrong time. I can say something as a joke and there just be a little bit too much venom in my voice and the entire room will go silent. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, I'm kidding. And everybody's like, it didn't sound like you were joking. I'm like, I was totally joking. It mm-hmm. came out way harder than I meant it to. That was a joke. Yeah. Um, and I've had to apologize to people after the fact because I realized afterwards, I was like, I have to be like, hey, did that come across? And they're like, yeah, it really did. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And then I got to send out apologies. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to be that person. Mm. But it would be very easy for you in that moment to be like, well, fuck you then. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like that would destroy what we have because two wrongs don't make a right. You can right. wait till the next day and be like, hey, I want to let you know that when you said blah, blah, blah the other night, it came across way harsher than I think you intended it to. And I want you to know that that bothered me. 
okay, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize that I did that or I didn't mean it to come across that way or whatever the case was, I'll make, make an effort to not do that again because now I know that that bothered you. Those things are going to happen forever in life. Mm -hmm. It's not going to just be in the initial learning stages. You're going to come across things like that 10, 20 years into a relationship or a marriage or whatever because you never know how people are going to evolve and change. And when people have false ex expectations mm -hmm. from romance novels and think that everything is just going to be perfect and have the perfect partner or the perfect sex life, that's when that can also create conflict as well. I, I really see this as like it's not a blueprint for relationships. Romance novels? Yeah. No, neither is corn. Right. And women love to say that all the time. Corn isn't real. Right. It is over dramatized is not the word. But it, it's scripted. It is. It is. It's not real. And they preach that constantly. Well, neither are romance novels. So this person continues on in their post and it gets kind of. I don't know how I feel about the rest of this, but I'm going to read it anyway. How about you promise to never look at corn again and get her to promise to never read romance novels and you two put all of that energy into being romantic and sexy and erotic with each other? Yep, 100% agree. With the whole chest. Yes. Because that's exactly what I just said we do for each other. It is. And this person goes, oh, corn doesn't mean anything. It puts you in the mood. It takes off pressure. Doesn't have anything to do with your relationship. Same thing for sexy romance novels. I don't need corn to put me in the mood. That's, that's what men say, though. That's their... Because they're not happy in their relationship. Or they're not attractive to their partner anymore. Right. In the beginning, was that a thing? In the beginning of your relationships, did you need something like that to get you going? And it, there, if somebody goes, well, that was 20 years ago, then get your hormones checked. Yeah. Because there's something that's going on there, whether it's ment mental or physical, that's making you not attracted to your person anymore. Figure out what that problem is and fix that. We've been preaching that since December of last year, and that's why we get the emails. Mm -hmm. It's like we're teenagers again. It's like we're first started dating again. We're in love all over again. He can't keep his hands off me, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's because you've changed something in your relationship dynamic that's made him attractive to you again or made her attractive to you again. Maybe you made her feel more safe. You got a raise, and now she feels financially secure. Something has changed, mm -hmm. which has made that go back to the way that it was. I, I just don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think you need those things to get things going. If you are, if you need something more from your partner, you need to tell your partner. Yeah. Regardless of how it may make them feel in the moment, you could even hit them with it in a check-in or just be like, Hey, this has been a thing. I know I have not been on my A game. You have not been on your A game. These are things that I think you could change to make them make me on my a game what can i do mm. to make you on your a game have that discussion people want to have a back and forth to improve their lives and if they don't then you need to re really reevaluate your relationship yeah how are you going to run a business together and then each of you make final decisions yeah it doesn't work that way it does not work that way you want to talk about it on a business level, even a 50-50 business, somebody has to make a compromise. Right. Because otherwise, things can't get done. If you have two decision makers, they they have to agree. Mm -hmm. And that comes down to negotiation. And if you can negotiate in business, you can negotiate in your fucking home. Because somebody's going to compromise. Do you want to wrap this up, take a break, and then come back and record an episode? Yeah, we can do that. All right. Would you want to go live tonight and do an episode? Uh, no, because that's not, I mean, I would, we can go live tonight, but not as an episode Okay. because we need to have content through Vegas. Otherwise oh, right, we're going to have right, problems. Recording. So guys, I hope you took something away from this. I mean, this was really just R and R these ruminations and revelations are really just her and I having discussions about things that, um, we would otherwise not be discussing and we don't have the discussions before we record so that we can actually have the talks. Mm. Sometimes these things are super fucking short and we have to fill it with nonsense yeah. Because sometimes you're like, I agree. And I'm like, I agree. And I'm like, okay, it's been 10 minutes. Now what? Somebody had made a comment on one of the videos that we posted. It was a short. And they were like, do you, it was talking about people pleasuring themselves in a okay. relationship. And they were like, do you think that that's cheating? And somebody in the comments who has been a, a longtime watcher of the show had was like, it's not that it's cheating. It's that you are removing the opportunity for your partner to take care of the needs that you have, which can further separate. It can build resentment. Right. It can. It can do a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, is that still your stance? Do you think that, that self-pleasure is cheating or, or like has it evolved since all of this has happened or do you still stand by you are just removing the ability to let your partner be a part of your life in that aspect? 
I still stand by it's removing the ability of the partner to be there and be present. I think if there is a set rule of we don't do that and then you're doing it anyway in secret, that is cheating. I think that over time, that kind of shit could lead to cheating. Yeah. I also think that it would definitely lead to the end of intimacy. I agree. Because if you're taking care of yourself, why would you want to do it again in two or three hours? Right. Right. Or I'm just not in the mood. And when I'm in the mood, if she's not around, I'm just going to do it. She's at work. Right. Can't wait five hours for her to get home. Right. And then eventually it's not going to be in, in talks to them because they don't want, you don't want, you know what I mean? Like. You're not going to tell them that you're doing this. Right. So, so where's, where's the next step going to be? The next step is going to be to romance novels or to corn. So. And then from corn, it's to hitting up people on Instagram. Yeah. Snapchat. Yeah. Trying to get that dopamine response. There's levels to this shit, guys. You guys really need to be aware of the decisions you make. It evolves. Because like we said in, in one of the other episodes, if you're at step one and step 30 is is like the you'll never do that. The closer you get to step 30, the the less that line is visible. You get to step 25 and you're like, oh, so, you know, the next thing's not that big of a deal. And the next thing's just not that big of a deal. You get to 30 and be like, how the fuck did I get here? Well, I mean, it's really not big of a deal. I've already done all these other things. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a, it's just something to consider. You guys need to, to think about your actions a little bit more. Yeah. Integrity goes a long way. With that being said, remember, guys, you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.